Hey everyone, welcome back. And today let's do something a little bit different. I wanna go over the basics of recursion today. Don't worry, most of my videos will still focus on algorithm style coding questions and the solutions for those questions. But today I'm gonna go over but this video today is going to be one that even beginners will be able to understand and we're going to be going through the basics of recursion as well as coding up the solution and the example that we're going to use for that is going to be the Fibonacci numbers. If you're not familiar with Fibonacci numbers, it's basically a series of numbers where the zeroth Fibonacci number is equal to zero, the first Fibonacci number is equal to one, and the remaining Fibonacci numbers are equal to the sum of the two previous Fibonacci numbers. If that sounds complicated, don't worry, it's simpler than you might think. In this case, the second Fibonacci number is basically the sum of the zeroth Fibonacci number and the first Fibonacci number, which we know are zero and one. So therefore the second Fibonacci number will be one. And we can go like this forever. So for example, the third Fibonacci number would basically be the first Fibonacci number added with the second Fibonacci number. So in other words, the generic equation is the nth Fibonacci number is basically the n minus 1 Fibonacci number added with the n minus 2 Fibonacci number. Computing the nth Fibonacci number has many different solutions, but today we're going to be going over the recursive solution, which is not the most efficient, but we're just doing it to learn about recursion. Imagine for Christmas that I gave you a box or a gift, and I told you that inside that box is the third Fibonacci number. It's a pretty weird gift, but let's say you're excited about it anyway, and then you open up the box, and I promised you that it would have the third Fibonacci number, but instead, you open up the box and you find two more boxes. Don't you hate it when that happens? Well, in this case, one of the boxes is labeled to have the second Fibonacci number, and the second box is labeled to have the first Fibonacci number. So technically I didn't lie because you can add these two boxes together and still get the third Fibonacci number. But first we have to open up these boxes. Let's open up the second Fibonacci number box first. And inside of that, we get another box and another box as well. We find two more boxes in the green box. And these two boxes are labeled as the first Fibonacci number and the zeroth Fibonacci number. So we just keep getting more and more boxes. This time, let's open up the first Fibonacci number box. Well, inside of that, we finally get something that's not a box. We get a number and the number is one. That makes sense because we know that the first Fibonacci number is one. So you're starting to see that I didn't lie. So far we have a one. Maybe if we open up all of the boxes, we will have what we're looking for, the third Fibonacci number. Now let's open up the first box again, which we'd find a one again. We have two boxes that are both labeled as the first Fibonacci number. And let's open up the zeroth box and we find the value zero. So now that we've opened up all of the boxes, we can add up all of the numbers, one plus zero plus one, and we get the value two, which is the correct value we were looking for. This is the third Fibonacci number. So you had to open up a lot of boxes, which sometimes happens in real life but we did get what we were looking for. All the pieces are here. So how does this actually relate to recursion? Well, with this analogy, we actually cover a lot of what we need to know for recursion. We learned that there's two kinds of boxes. One type of box can actually have a value in it, right? Like a number in it. And other kinds of boxes, like this green box, can have more boxes inside of them. And these two types of boxes are very different. Boxes like this one, which just have a value inside them, are considered the base case in recursive problems. Base case, you can think of it as having a box that does not have more boxes inside of it right? With the base case, we will stop. We won't keep going down and down and finding more and more boxes to open up. But boxes like this one, which have additional boxes inside of them are called the recursive step or recursive case in our uh, problem, right? Not the base case, the recursive case, which means we have additional boxes to open up. We don't know how long it's going to take. We don't know how many boxes there are. It could have a ton more boxes. In this case, the blue box has a green box. Inside of the green box, there's two more boxes. And then we finally get values. 
I hope this analogy is helpful for you, but you can kind of see that drawing this out is going to get difficult, and that's why we have an easier way to draw out recursive problems. And the easier way to draw it out, if you've watched any of my videos, you probably know, is using a decision tree, because it's a lot easier to draw and easier to visualize. So we want to know what the third Fibonacci number is. But we know that to get the third Fibonacci number recursively, we have to get the second Fibonacci number and add it with the first Fibonacci number. So these are like our boxes. After we open up this box, we find two more boxes. So now we have to unpack the green box. We know that to get the second Fibonacci number, we have to add together the first Fibonacci number as well as the zeroth Fibonacci number. Now let's actually open up this box on the right side, the first Fibonacci number. The good thing is we know that inside of the first Fibonacci number box is not going to be another box. It's going to be a value. This is our base case. Notice how this base case is the same as the one up here. We know that the first Fibonacci number is equal to one. So we don't have to continue going down the recursive step. And we have the same box over here, the same recursive call. And here, we know it's gonna, there's gonna be a one inside of that as well. Now we have just one box left to open up. We know that the zeroth Fibonacci number is zero, so that's exactly what we're gonna find here, right? That's just part of our base case. These two values are our base case. So enough talking about it, now let's actually code it up. So here you can see we have our definition for the function fib, and it takes a single parameter n, which is gonna be the Fibonacci number that we're trying to determine. And we also know that there's two cases usually in recursive problems, the base case and the recursive case. And each of these cases could actually have multiple steps. In our base case, which I usually like to write first when writing recursive problems, we know that we actually have two base cases. If n is equal to zero, meaning we're trying to compute the zeroth Fibonacci number, we know that there's not gonna be more boxes inside of this. This is the base case. We know inside of this box is gonna be a value, and that value is gonna be zero. We know that there's a second recursive case, which is similar to the first one. If n is equal to one, if we're trying to compute the first Fibonacci number, there's no more boxes inside of there. We know that the value inside of it is going to be one. Right, so this is our zeroth base case, and this is our first base case. But we also know there's a recursive case as well. If n is not zero and it's not one, that means it's too big, so we have to uh, you know, do the recursive step, and this is basically the portion where there's boxes inside of a box, right? We're calling the same function that we're inside of, right? And you can think of that like a box, that's one analogy, or you can think of it like a tree, right? We're trying to get the third Fibonacci number, right? F is the function we're using, to do that, we have to add together the second Fibonacci number, so we're calling the same function on a different number, on a smaller number, and getting the first Fibonacci number by making another call to this function, right? And it's very important here, I'm going to call the Fibonacci recursive call, I'm going to call it with n minus 1. If we didn't include this n minus 1, what would have happened? Well, we would have gotten something like this. We have f of 3, right? We have a box that has a third Fibonacci number and then we call it with the same value we'd get f of 3 f of 3 forever right that's like having boxes inside of each other that go on infinitely and we know that's not really possible and we definitely don't want that to happen in our code so we put n minus 1 here and we also have to call the same recursive function we know inside of our box is not just going to be one box there's going to be two boxes so we're calling Fibonacci on n minus 1 Two. And with these two boxes, we make sure we add the result of them, right? We're trying to add up these numbers, and once we've added them up, we can go ahead and return them. So I really hope that this was understandable for you. And if you have a little bit of experience, you might be thinking this example is way too easy. You want to see an even harder recursive problem. Well, believe it or not, if you can follow the steps that I talked about today, drawing out decision trees, understanding what the base case is, understanding what the recursive case is, does a box have one box inside of it or does it have multiple boxes? How do those boxes relate to each other? That's really all what recursion is about. 
If you can use these ideas as building blocks, you can solve a lot more difficult problems. And if you watch some of my recursive videos about dynamic programming or graphs or backtracking, you know that I followed this general guideline and I'm able to solve much more difficult problems using these rules. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. And don't worry, I'll be making more LeetCode Solution videos as well.